Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, our next speaker is a true hardware hero. In the early 80s, he built and published the designs for a homebrew personal computer that was for a long time the only personal computer available in communist Yugoslavia and was built thousands and thousands of times. Since then, he's never stopped building and his wide-ranging projects reflect his love for kind of quasi-artistic topics like time, random numbers, and interpersonal communication. Um, so without further ado, please join me in welcoming to the Hagaday Supercon stage, Boya Antonich. So uh, the first thing that I have to talk about is uh, the badge that you have in your hands, I guess. And I don't think that I have to talk much about the badge because it is just self-explained. You see, there's a microcontroller, PIC32, and uh, a keyboard which is matrix keyboard connected in the standard way. There's a flash memory, 16 megabytes flash memory, also connected in the standard way. Uh, a TFT display and uh, amplifier with three channel uh, mu uh, binary musical output. Uh, the only thing that I should note is you can see that uh, left shift, you can see it on the top, left shift and reset keys are uh, connected uh, uh, serially. So you have actually to reset the microcontroller. You have to first to, to press left shift to reset it. Uh, it's because there is, there is a possibility that you could uh, reset the microcontroller while you, you ha have some unsaved program inside. So just to, to, to be sure that you will not uh, erase your program uh, unintentionally, uh, we, uh, we've got, we, we, we uh, uh, have that function that you have to press left shift and reset to reset it. So if you, maybe you tried to reset it, just do a single reset key, but it simply does not work. Uh, the only really interesting thing here is the expansion connector here. You can see it at the, here, at the edge of your badge. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it has the programming contacts where you can connect the PIC kit 3 or PIC kit 4 or 2 maybe, uh, and, and, and reprogram the microcontroller. And also you have some special outputs for, uh, it, they can be used of course as, as a general purpose parallel input outputs, but also for uh, I square C port and for uh, UART, which can also be used uh, with the uh, USB to UART uh, converter. Uh, I will not to talk too much. I'm sure that that uh, you know everything about this. It's it's very standard hardware. In it's very easy to understand it. Uh, the expansion board, which you also got here, 
uh, it has a, a, a lot of general purpose pads. All round pads are general purpose, and all square pads have some special function here. They are uh, internally connected. There is ground connection, voltage supply connection, red one. Uh, you have this drawing on the project page on, on Hackett.io, you know, pro pro project page for, for, the, for the badge. Uh, and uh, green and blue connections are for I2C bus, so that you can, uh, co you can connect the standard uh, shitty add-on con uh, uh, add for, for, for badges. On, on these square pads, you also got connectors for that pads and you just solder them there and, and you can use three shitty add-on uh, boards on one expansion uh, board. That much about the, the badge. I would like to save a lot of time to just to, to talk to you about the cube. You've also got the cube, and uh, it has some electronics inside, but you still don't know about it. It's just because it was the last minute project before the conference, and uh, we just wanted it to be some kind of surprise for you. And the, the, the project for the cube will be uh, published on Hackaday.io also just in, in a day or two, very soon. <clears throat> I will talk just about uh, some, uh, very roughly about some things. Uh, first, there is the microcontroller, you see it, lower right. Uh, it's PIC microcontroller, it's 8-bit PIC microcontroller. Uh, which has accelerometer on the PCB also, 16 megabyte flash memory, and uh, FT230X, it's FTDI uh, USB to serial con uh, converter. So you can connect it to USB. The supply for the cube is through USB port. Uh, there are also some other uh, uh, stages which are uh, uh, intended specifically for, uh, for crypto protection, for your ASCII messages, and for, uh, and for uh, experimenting with uh, crypto techniques. First, you have the, the DC to DC converter, uh, which uh, transforms five volts DC to 17 volts DC. This high voltage is needed for white noise generator, which generates through random numbers. And uh, uh, capacitive communicator, you see, when you put two, when you put two cubes next to each other, they can communicate because there is a copper foil on the top of this cube. And uh, when you put them together, those two copper foils actually form a kind of capacitor with very low capacitance. It's, it's a fraction of one picofarad. But it, it's still enough to let them communicate and exchange data. Uh, you don't have to open your cube <laughs> to see what, what's inside. I'm sure that you are interested what's inside, and I'll show you just to save you that opening. There's a PCB at the bottom, and there is one copper foil at the top, which is actually one side of the capacitor which enables communication of two cubes. Uh, for that communication, we need a little higher voltage than five volts. That's why this converter is used both for white noise generator and uh, communication unit. There is an electronic switch for this copper foil here. So this push-pull driver here is the transmitter, and this amplifier is the receiver for, for uh, capacity communicator. Here is the full schematic diagram. Uh, it will be also published on the HackHacker.io project page for the cube, so you will have enough time to study it and to, to 
to see what's what on, on this uh, schematic diagram. I'll just tell you just in few words. You see the copper sheet for communication? This is the uh, lower side of push-pull driver for the transmitter, and the high side is actually the resistor. You see this 10 kilo ohms. You, maybe, maybe you think that it is too high output imped impedance, but uh, actually the 10 kilo ohms are completely okay if you had only one picofarad capacitor and very, very high input impedance of the receiver. So it's still okay. Another transistor works as a, a transmitter receiver switch. You see, when it's off, then uh, this upper side of the push-pull uh, uh, normally uh, conducts voltage here to the copper shield. But when it's low, then this diode in inversely polarized, so the input is free. It's, it, it, uh, it's a very high impedance switch. This input is uh, connected to, to the copper shield and amplifier amplifies and so on. Uh, there is no modulation just to protect uh, the whole uh, process from, from uh, some kind of, of monitoring it, it from the room. You see, uh, radio frequency communication is not safe at all. But this capacitive communication can be safe if, if it's not modulated, and this one in, uh, is not. Uh, what else can I tell about it? Everything is, is very standard. Uh, you see the flash memory, accelerometer, and the uh, USB to UART interface, and that's all. Now, let's see what can we do with all that. When you connect it to the USB, you must have uh, the mm, terminal software, some kind of UART terminal software. Uh, there's a lot of these programs free on the web, and uh, you can load any one of them and, and uh, just connect it. And uh, when you type a question mark, of H for help, you will get this message. This is the, the uh, help message. Uh, just be sure first to, j just let me get back one step. Uh, one more. You see, those parameters should be adjusted. 115 kilobaud, eight bits for byte, no parity, one stop bit. So when you connect it and, and type question mark and, and uh, uh, with carriage return set, please, uh, carriage return should follow this uh, question mark, you will get this message. What can you do with it? What is it? Uh, there are two main uh, commands. One is move, is M for move, and another one is X for XOR. Uh, for instance, when you type move, you are expected to type the source and destination for that move. In this case, this is move from buffer to UART. You see the right side of the help screen. In this case, you move from uh, buffer, buffer one, to UART. Uh, it's always performed on, on one block, which is 512 bytes, and it is fixed, it's constant. One block is 512 bytes. Uh, so the, the contents of buffer will be moved to, to UART. What does it mean? To UART, UART actually is your terminal, and you will see the contents of the buffer one with this command. Uh, the similar command uh, move from UART to N. N is network. A network is just, uh, conditionally speaking, is a communication between two cubes. When you connect two cubes, that's a cube network. That kind of network is N. So you can uh, send data from UART uh, 512 bytes also to the network, to the transmitter. 
uh, of course, it's supposed that you have another cube next to it, a few centimeters from it, which is prepared, which, uh, which actually expects those, those bytes. It could be moved from, from uh, network, maybe to UART to see it on the screen directly, or in the flash, or, or anywhere you wish. The only thing, so, so the, the main format is move, source, destination. And uh, you can also add one number after it, which could be decimal or hexadecimal, which uh, defines how many times that operation will be performed. So there are pointers for flash memory. If you move something to or from flash memory, those pointers are actually uh, automatically, automatically uh, incremented. So you can read with this command, you can read the whole flash memory uh, block by block. Uh, in this, this number, 32K, means that the whole contents of 16 megabytes memory will be read or written in the uh, the command X, which is XOR, is actually the same as move, but the only uh, difference is that the uh, contents between source and destination is XORed with the contents of flash memory. You can also, you can also uh, XOR flash memory with itself. You can say X, F, to somewhere, maybe you are, but then the uh, pointer is incremented twice. What else can we say about it? Uh, there are also two more commands, R, R and W, it's read address, pointer, define, you can def define that read address pointer. Also, no, not in bytes, but in blocks. And uh, you can define the seed for a, a pseudo random number generator, which is, th there is the true random number generator with the, you, you've seen the uh, uh, white noise generator, which is used for true random numbers, and also the pseudo num random, random number generator. And so you can define the seed for that pseudo so random number if you want to, to uh, experiment with, with different seeds. That should be all. There is also an uh, accelerometer at this moment. Uh, you, you can read its uh, contents, but you can also use it to increase uh, the, to increase the, the improbability that the true random number will be cracked. You see, true random number generator can be perfect. This uh, 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 white noise true random number generator is, is pretty good. It's, it's actually a high quality random number generator, but uh, if you want just to increase the entropy of that, of that number stream, you can also use the accelerometer and shake it while it, uh, shake the cube while it generates random numbers to increase the quality of that random number uh, stream. This is just the example of the command move pseudo random numbers to UART. 512 numbers will be moved to UART and you can read them on your screen. So, how we deal with this uh, thing to, to protect our messages, to encrypt our messages? You know, this is the basic theory about encrypting. Uh, you have some message here it is in uh, ASCII code. Uh, in this case, only seven bit ASCII code, although it can work with eight bits also. And the green column is the uh, output from uh, pseudo random number generator or true random number generator. 
then you get the red column, which is the result, which is actually encrypted message, which is uh, not readable to anyone, but to someone who has the same random number screen, here the green one, which is used to decrypt the message so we can use the, the, the source, we can read the source message again. The problem is there is always someone who is trying to, to uh, see our message, which is encrypted, and he tries to decrypt that message. You see, uh, when you use the pseudo-random number generator, uh, there is always a possibility that someone can crack it. He needs the very powerful computer and uh, a lot of time to crack it, but if there is a certain interest, if someone wants to crack your message, he can do it always if you use pseudo-random number generator. Uh, it's much better if you use true random number to generate the code, and uh, you can, uh, then you can uh, encrypt it in a way which cannot be cracked. So your true random number uh, uh, coded message can never be cracked. It's, it's perfectly safe. And... Uh, the only disadvantage is that you have to pair two cubes just to copy the contents of random number uh, uh, of, 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 the, of the message, to copy the contents from one to another so that we have the same 16 megabyte uh, stream in our flash memories. So uh, maybe uh, we can uh, copy to get two identical cubes with identical contents, then I can take one and fly somewhere to Japan maybe. We can communicate and no one can crack that message. So the, there is a, a, a perfect system that I'm thinking about in this case. If you use true random number to pair two cubes, you can uh, use you, your computer to, to uh, decrypt that message using the cube again. And uh, uh, the problem is that, yes, uh, the true random number stream is not possible to crack, but uh, I think that uh, those guys, those bad guys who are trying to crack your message, they are actually not doing it in the, in the fair way. They are uh, just cheating in some way. That, that fair way is, is too expensive and too long. Uh, so they are cheating. They are just inputting some viruses in your computer, some malware programs, which can read your, your uh, key from your computer, and that's the way that they do it. That could be the, the disadvantage of that system, but then we can build another system, we can use another clean system, which was never connected to the internet, and we can just connect those two systems and uh, the decrypted message and the key should be only in the clean system. And this dirty system is actually safe again be because uh, there is, it contains only the coded message with the true random numbers which are uncrackable. So we can think, is this clean system completely safe? It might be, but it might be not also. Maybe someone can use the USB stick to to uh, input some, to, to, to uh, save some, some malware code inside. But if you build the system which is, uh, the, which is completely insensitive to, to viruses, which is safe for viruses, then you can have the, the absolutely safe system that no one can crack. The only question is what can that system with, which cannot be attacked by, by malware. What it can be? It must have the keyboard and the display. And I'll give you an idea what that system can be. It can be your badge. It has the keyboard, it has the display also. So if you use a system like this, I'm completely sure that no one ever can crack it. Thank you very much.